the main issue um, where lamellar tearing becomes a, a risk factor is typically, uh, one is the thickness of the steel, uh, meaning the steel that's being attached, and two is the configuration of the connection. So that's why I raised, uh, so if you have a plate and let's say you're making a cruciform shape, um, or if you're attaching a flange onto a beam, a flange of a beam into the flange of a column, uh, or if you're making a tube section uh, using a, a built-up box section where you're attaching one plate into uh, uh, another plate. Essentially, every any time that you're pulling on through the thickness of the plate, uh, then you have some risk of lamellar tearing. And of course, why weldments would create that is because the weldments themselves are quite hot when they're getting welded. And as they cool down, they start pulling the steel apart along its length, meaning try to tear it apart. And, and that's typically the types of connections where you, you'd see uh, lamellar tearing being a, a major risk factor. So, and there are many, um, let's call it methods of reducing this, all the way from how you actually plan your welding, how much preheat you put into your steel, how fast you let it cool down, uh, the type of the thickness of steel that you order, uh, what type of steel you order. So, so for instance, uh, Dave just raised an interesting question of, uh, well, people have to now do more stuff. Now, what is the more? So the worst thing, we, the, the, the worst outcome of this would be if all the engineers went out there and said, look, we don't trust South African steel supply. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to go and order everything to EN1164, which, which is essentially a, a lamellar tearing um, um, standard uh, in, the, in the Euro norms that essentially says that the steel mill has to do several checks to make sure that it qualifies for a certain type of use. And it comes in different criteria, obviously. Now, if engineers did that, it's immediately, that will raise the price of steel immediately because there's a lot of work that the steel mill has to do now, essentially ultrasonic testing and various types of other tests before the steel is even shipped off to the merchant. That, that's not what we're looking for because we assume that a lot of the steel production methods now are good for most of the work that we do. If you're doing something specialized on a bridge and you're doing a connection that is very vulnerable to lamellar tearing, yes, it does make sense to specify the steel to EN uh, 10164. Um, but if you don't do it and you do it the normal way and then you have lamellar tearing, what do you do? And then there's all, obviously the whole also, let's, say, let's call it regime of standards and expertise on acceptance criteria. What that means is, well, what do you do with this thing that has now that now has this defect, just like the trust we discussed? It doesn't mean all the trusts have to be torn down, but now you have to do a lot of work to try to figure out what to do about it. And that's a whole, what we call uh, acceptance criteria, which is its own, let's call it area of work. So um, I don't know if that answers it, but th that's where we sit. 